Hi guys, Bill Bacardi. Hopefully everybody's well. I uh, just got home from work. And we're going to pick a lock, guys. I'm going to try and get as many as I can up again for you as well. Like I said, my hands are feeling good right now. Uh, yesterday I did one of those Corbins, and that was a tough lock. So I think today we're going to do with this one from Turk Matt. Been by Turk Matt. It's a HUD, mortar cylinder. Not a really bad bidding. Number 12, it's his number 12 lock. Uh, you can see the bidding there, guys. Okay. Get him in the vise. Let's see if we can't get him picked tonight. Just a five pinner. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five pinner. Works very nicely. Let's see, it's all locked up there, guys. Uh, it's a quick set keyway, kind of. So we'll get the 50 thousandths here. Actually, we might be able to go from the bottom of the keyway. Actually, I think we can go from the bottom of the keyway on this one. Yeah, that'll work. Are we squared up there, guys? Let's see. I think that's a good view for you. And uh, we're going to go in with 25 thousandths. <sighs> see if we can't get them open tonight. Okay, all the way in the back of the lock. A little crunching. I think that's five. Four put me into a little false set. There's no way that that just opened. There's no way. All right, we're going to lock this back up. Pick it again. I Let me reset everything. Maybe something stuck up in the Bible or something in this. There, let's do this case. I don't hear nothing. Cool. Okay. All right, let's repick it. Bottom of the keyway again. I'm going to go in with this gem. Five. Four. Gave me a little false set on four. Big click, though. Yeah, I think something might have been jammed up in here, guys. That's the only way I picked that easy the first time around. Oh, real deep false set there, guys. Look at how deep that went. Can you see it? Wow. Now I got nothing on nobody in there. Nobody's talking again. So I'm going to have to let some tension back up. See if I can't set. There's a T-pin. Guaranteed T-pin, fellas. <laughs> Look at how far I'm turning that. Jesus. Okay, that was an overset for sure, but now I just got it back. Okay, look how deep that false set is again, guys. Jesus. Turk, Matt, like I said yesterday, you guys are all calling yourself newbies. Let me tell you something. You're making some pretty hard locks here, guys. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'm overset on something. I wonder if it's a key pin, T pin. You know what? We're going to relock and start over because... Okay, five, four, three puts us into that real deep false set. Okay, so it's one or two holding us up right now. Okay, yeah, see, I'm getting nothing on none of the other pins here, guys. Yeah, but you guys are saying these are all newbies. You are making locks that are really, really hard, guys, so... I think you got to quit calling yourself newbies. You guys are pretty good pickers. Okay. There's that deep full setback again. You know what? We're going to go to this diamond here because I feel like I'm not getting high enough again. Okay. Real deep full set again. And I'm slipping around on that number four pin, I think it is. Ooh, I'm back in that deep false set again. Yeah, this is a pretty tough little lock for a little five pinner. Quick set keyway. That false set gets so, so deep. I mean, I have some deep false sets before, but Jesus, that's deep, deep. I mean, that's almost open, it feels like. <laughs> I think that that was number two, actually. But something's still not set because... See, as soon as I touch that one, it goes into that deep false set again. So I'm not high enough there for some reason, guys. Let me get that reach. I'm going to counter-rotate it a little bit because I feel like I'm just so deep that I can't get out of it. Okay, 
That's an overset for sure there. For sure, that's an overset, guys. Okay. Let's start over. <laughs> Let's go backwards. Instead of six down, we're going to go one to four and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I'm sorry, guys. See that deep false set again? Look at Jesus. And then when you get into this, you can't get back out of it. My place is loose again. I hate when it does that. So I'm kind of rotating it again. But as soon as I touch two, it goes right back into that. So we're going to have to set everything else and then go to two, I think. There it is. It's open, guys. Oh, goodness gracious. That was a tough little lock, guys. <laughs> little five pinner. Wow. Dirk, man, I don't want to hear no more of this newbie stuff going on because you ain't newbies making tough locks like that, guys. You can see it's picked here. Okay. I'm going to try not to lock it up. Uh, am I in frame there, guys? Yes. Okay. Pull these two screws off of it. Like I said, there's definitely a really, really deep T pin in there because you've seen how deep that full set was. Oh, you can tighten these too tight. That's good. I put one together and uh, I don't know, it had a lock tight or something on the uh, threads. It was an Everest that uh, Apache Locksport was picking. <laughs> he says, he asked if I put it on with the impact wrench that you put tires on cars with. Oh, we got to put a shim in here. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was a hilarious moment, guys. I thought it was funny. Okay, well, that shim slid right in there, so hopefully we'll be okay. I'm going to turn these key pins a little further toward me, so this way we don't get jammed up on nothing. Oh, I see the key pin that's in it right now. There's what it is. There's some key pin, pin and pins here, guys. Wow, I see awesomeness in the whole thing here. Let me show you that everything's in and working. Jesus, guys. I mean, I thought we're all friends here. <laughs> Can you see inside that? They're all in and working there, fellas. Everything had to be picked. Threading in uh, one, two, three, I see thread. Uh, I'm sorry, two, three, four, I see threading in. There's one. He is a keep, a teep, uh, Pin and pin, key pin. Number two is threading and it's so deep that you can't even get the pin out. Number three. There he is. Number four. Number five is another deep, uh, uh, pin and pin. I'm sorry, guys. All right, there's nothing done in one and five. Three. Two, three, and four are all threaded, guys. Let's see what he's got upstairs here. Uh, let's get this shim out of here first. Okay. My tweezers here. Okay. Number one. He's just like a tapered. Let's get the spring out of there. Okay. Copper. Short copper spring. Number two. He's another like a tapered. Oh no, there's something else going on in there. What else is the what is that? He has a wafer behind it for some reason. Maybe it should give you a different false set or something. Oh wait a minute. What is going on here? I don't know where that came from. Is there a hole in this? Yes, there is. Okay. I see what he's got now. Whew, that was kind of scary. I didn't know what it came out of. I didn't see it. Here's three. It was serrated with a long copper spring. Let's get the other two out of the back, I guess. Whew. Here's six. He's another one of those, like a tapered pin. These are pretty nice pins here, buddy. Very nice job. Steel in five, spring, four, oh, he's a deep, deep, deep spool. I can't even get him out of the chamber. I think he's stuck on the spring maybe a little bit. Very deep spool. Okay, let's get that spring out of there. There he is. He just fell. I got him over here. Run away, spring. Run away. Grab my tweezers. 
Okay, I'll bring this down to the pinning board to show you this lock and all these parts in here. Uh, has he got anything done to the Bible up there? I don't think so. He didn't take the cap off of what it doesn't look like. Actually, maybe that's just wear and tear. I don't know. Let me know, Matt, uh, Turk Matt. It doesn't look like counter milling, but it looks like they're kind of oval. Then. That could just be from wear and tear use over the years, you know. Okay, I'm going to bring this down to the pinning board, guys. Show you all these awesome pins that Turk Matt made. Awesome, awesome pins. Okay, and number one, he went this way, a key pin. He's a pin and pin, very, very cool. Turns into a T pin. That's where that real deep fall set was coming from. And then this one was in here, number two. Oh, and it had this, uh, it's like tapered the driver on the top with a copper spring. And then in two, we had this, I'm going to say that's a spool key pin with this. And this rod slides inside of it. Oh, that rod's steel, too, because it's sticking to my tweezers. And then it had this on the wafer on top of it with a long steel spring on that one, guys. Then in three, we had this serrated key pin here with the serrated driver up above. And they're like, like I said, they're like, uh, they're like rounded on the ends, like tapered almost, like a ball uh, with that real long copper spring there. Then four, we had this spool up top and a serrated key pin down bottom. Very nice. Steel spring up above him. And then this is a really cool pin. This is another pin and pin key pin in five. With this up, the same spool, the same uh, driver up above with like the rounded ends. And what's really cool about what he's doing here. Is this was in like a T pin in the back. So when this key pin was compressed, it pushed this part up out of the sleeve a little bit. Pretty cool. I gotta say, Turk Matt, that's nice. Very nice job. Let me stick that together and see if you can see that, guys. Oh, actually, it didn't. I thought it did. Oh, yeah, see, there it is. See, see how it sticks through? Like a T pin almost there. Absolutely awesome pins, my friend. Okay, here they are, real fast again for you. That's three, four, five. Guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great evening and good night.